Hey mages, welcome to today's video. Today we are looking at some of the best budget meta MTG Arena decks currently in standard. These are some of the best performing decks and they are great decks with fewer rares in. Now if you look at some of the top standard BO1 meta decks, they can have anything from 35, 40. I even saw one that had 50 rares, you know, mixture of rare and mythic cards in, which is, you know, it is fine if you've got unlimited wild cards. But what, you know, a lot of people like is sort of budget top meta decks that can perform well, can help you rank up, but not using 40 rares per deck. So these rare decks start from 16 rares as a maximum, and I think the final one has just 11 rares. They perform really well on the ladder, have nice percentage win rates, and without further ado, let's take a look at the first deck. So the first deck is 16 rares, and it's Mono Black Zombies. This is a really cool deck based around zombies. Um, it also has a head of a lot of removal and as you can see with a lot of these you save la uh, rares on the land so this will have 20 swamps you could even change this a little bit maybe add in a couple of field of ruin if you want as well but i've taken this deck list as is and this is what it is and it's performing really well so looking at some of the rares that are crafted in this you've got champion of the perish which is a four off really you know Really important card for the deck. Whenever another zombie ends the battlefield under your control, put a 1 1 counter on it. This, if you can get, you know, if you're lucky enough to get it down turn one, this can really build up and be one hell of a beater. Other rares in the deck as well is the Mythic Rare. We've got Tainted Adversary. It's a 2 3 with Death Touch. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay three any number of times. When you pay this card, put 1 1 counters on Tainted. Then you create twice that many zombie creature tokens with Decayed. It's a really, really cool card and comes in. Really big death touch is nice for evasion, and then you could just spam the board with lots and lots more zombies, which is obviously what you want to be doing in the deck. The next card we have is a Meat Hook Massacre. This is one of your other mythic rare crafts. Um, very good. You'll be able to use this in multiple decks as well. So this is a really safe craft, one of the best removals in standard. Uh, each creature gets X minus X minus X to end a turn, whatever that X is. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So it can be used as a wing con if you're if you're paying tainted adversary and getting loads of two two zombies in there and then killing them all for the win that seems pretty good and whenever a creature an opponent control dies you gain life so it helps you out that way as well the last rare is a headless rider there's four of these as well when the rider or another non-token zombie you control dies create a two two zombie token so when you kill maybe you know your champion of the perish dies or anything like that it won't affect the uh decay tokens obviously because it's non-token but then they can be replaced with zombie tokens and these ones don't have decay so you don't you know you don't lose them when you attack which is really good so that is the rares removal it has blood chief's thirst it also has um where is it infernal grasp as well destroy target creature you lose two life really good removal in black even you know at common stage and then you've got heroes downfall nice uncommon destroy target creature or planeswalker the double black yamana black makes no difference whatsoever other cards in the deck bringing stuff back from the graveyard for one mana back to your hand is nice so you can recur your rare cards maybe get your tainted diversary back and then you know lay the mana into it late turn as well in in later in the game you then have warlock class which is another drain effect at the beginning of your end state if a creature died each opponent loses one life so in conjunction with the meat hook massacre this makes this a, you know a really really good combination of two cards fell stinger death touch exploit when you exploit a creature target player, draws two cards and loses two life. Now, you can use this as a wing con. I've done it before. You know, don't always think, you you know, if you see your opponent down, you can use combinations of Mihook Massacre to get wins with this as well. And it's a good way to draw cards. Another card like Tainted Adversary with Death Touch. So it adds in for some more evasion. It has old shambles in there. Minus one, one or create a treasure to ramp you out a little bit more if you need it. And like I said just basic swamps in there you could upgrade this to more rares if you want to add in the new um rare land from uh dynasty or you know field of ruin i would add in maybe a couple of these if you want to just to deal with you know some harsh creature lands but they're uncommon as well so that won't change the 16 rare mythics uh, all in all i think this is a very good aggro type of deck and if you like aggro and you like tribal zombies is the deck for you so sticking at the 16 rare mythics, um, this is green white enchantments and probably one of the best decks around at the moment. And you can build this with 16 rares quite comfortably. Um, you're using your rares and your mythics on Hallowed Haunting. This is four of them as long as you control seven or enchantments. Creature control, flying and vision. This is the all-star of the deck. 
Uh, well, I will say it is the all-star rare for you, but there is this card. Now, this card is an uncommon and is very good. You have to, you know, if you're playing against this deck, you have to deal with this because it just makes everything cheaper. They can just get really, you know, get just start building up their enchantments and then you, they take over the game because you, unless you've got farewell in a deck where you can just mass get rid of everything, you probably will be in trouble. Now, it has a single ranger class, up to you if you want to keep in there. The deck list does run one, but you could save yourself possibly one rare. Um, but, you know, when you get to the four on this and pumping up the creatures, it's very good, and you can make a 2-2 two -two green wolf. But the level two and level three are really good for this. But, you know, possibly, if it's not in your collection, I don't think it's the be-all and end-all to the deck. You could add in, potentially, you know, add in another wedding announcement if you want to keep, you know, to the rares. Or, or you know, maybe something different, add in another colossal if you want to save yourself a rare. The, you know, there's different ways you can go around building these decks. So one of the other rares, wedding announcement... Uh, when it flips the festivity gives the creatures a bump um but this is a very good card coming down turn three if you've got your jukai down as well you can play it for two mana it's you know jukai is is a card in the deck the naturalist that really makes this deck tick as well you know along with the hallowed haunting but you know this can put creatures down uh as ability to draw cards as well it's just a very very good rare this and, and fits perfectly into this deck weaver of harmony other enchantment creatures you control get plus one so you can see this is uh enchantment tribal you could say this is a uh, uh creatures can get out of hand they buff up rather quick you've got way you know anthem effects like this creature and others that can make you know your enchantment creatures very big they'll get plus one one and you can copy target activated or trigger its ability with this card um which is you know pretty sweet if you want to copy an access ability like target creature gets plus one one to end of turn each artifact and enchantment you control um and you get to do that twice and you've got enchantments on there it makes it pretty big and makes it very hard. It runs Pacifism, which I absolutely love because this is one of my favourite cards. Um, just a really cool card. It's an arena card. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. It's, it's an old school card. And for me, it's, it's, it's just one of my favourite old school cards. So you can more card draw, Colossal Majesty. Um, this deck pretty much has it all, and it's very hard to deal with unless you've got mass enchantment removal. So this is why this deck is just doing so well at the moment. Um, Touch of the Spirit Realm. Ends the battlefield, exiles one target artifact or creature. Until it leaves the battlefield, you can also play the channel. Exile target artifact or creature. Returns the battlefield and it's only control at the beginning of the next end step. So has a bit of protection there as well for a creature, potentially. Uh, the land base, it has four rare lands there and two here. So the six of the 16 are in the lands. So I will leave that up to you if you want to go even more budget. Like I say, it won't be as consistent if you change these lands out. You have to know that. Bringing in taps lands is obviously not as good as these potential lands that can come in untapped. And then it's got a bit of life gain and blossoming sands and then some basics. But all in all, this is a very, very powerful deck for 16 rares. You could possibly get it down to 15, 14 if you like. But for 16, this deck has been performing very well. And if you've got the cards or if you're missing a couple, this is a good one to craft. So next up with 15 rares, we have mono white aggro. Now, this is a very aggressive deck um builds up counters puts loads of creatures on the battlefield as a real go wide strategy and then it has a uh, sort of a second spell theme like with clarion spirit that can make uh one one spirit tokens code spell cleric enters the battlefield if it's a second spell you get to put a one one counter on it so it has a counter and second spell sort of theme you've got guiding voice here that you've got a bit of learn and lesson package and then you've got homestead courage both of these can put counters on your creatures and this one has flashback and this has the ability to go to the sideboard for you we've also got monk of the open hand cast in the second spell put a 1-1 counter on it see so you can see this deck is very thematic and has a lot of synergy it's all about making tokens and all about making counters so you look at the rares that are in the deck you've got intrepid adversary so this is a 3-1 with lifelink it's a mythic rare ends the battle pay two any number of times when you pay this cost put that many valor counters on it then creatures you control get plus one one for each counter on it so very good card to put down even late game or even early game because even if you get one or two counters on your creatures even one counter can sometimes be enough because you've been attacking in with these little beaters that suddenly are two twos two twos and you, you know before opponent even gets a chance to wrath you've basically taken the win 
It has a four of Illumina Aspirant combat at the beginning of it. Put up on one counter and target creature you control. A couple of these in the field, and then you know your creatures really do get out of hand. This helps with the evasion. Maul of Skyclaves comes in for three mana and attaches itself straight away to a creature. As long as that creature survives, it's going to get plus two two and has flying and first strike. So if you've got a creature on there with big counters, then um, you always fear the Maul of Skyclaves because this would come down and potentially can get you the win as well. It does have a reduced memory in the main. There is more in the side, so you know it's a lesson card in the main. And then Skyclave Apparition to help with that removal. Now, opponents will get um, a token in the ability if they get to kill this, but it's still very good for keeping the pathway clears. And what's good about this is as well, you know, against the, the deck that we just previously spoke about, it hits Hallowed Haunting and Wedding. You'll see a lot of those decks around. So this is nice. And then they don't get it back. They get a token, which is a lot easier to deal with. The planes, it's just 20 planes. Very easy. Like I said, you can maybe add a couple of Field of Ruin if you like. And it also has Kabira Takedown for a, a little bit more of evasion to kill all creatures as well. So you go to the sideboard. Environmental Sciences in there, another reduced to memory, and then Inkling to help with me making a couple of flyers. A bit more, you know, counteraction there, putting two one counter type creatures and they gain vigilance with expanded anatomy, and then an annihilation just for a bit of added removal. Now, you could add in the seven mana mythic if you want to take this and upgrade it a little bit further. Uh, the exhibition, which is another good wing con that you would normally see two of these in the sideboard, but we're doing this as great decks with fewer rares, and this deck is still getting the results. So we're now down to 13 rares, and it's the ever consistent mono red goblins. Goblins, they can win quick. They either win quick or they lose quick. Um, if it goes long, tend to they they tend to not win. But you know they're so quick and so consistent that they just get the wins, which is why it's a really good performing meta deck. Now you look at the rares. You're always gonna you're gonna have this rare. Everyone it's already in your collection. It's an arena card. It's Goblin Trashmaster. So 13 rares technically is a little bit less because this is already in your connection. So if you're looking to craft this, you will have these other goblins you control get plus one one sacrifice a gobbo destroy target art. In fact, then you go to the other rares. You've got Hob Goblin Bandit Lord, another Anthem card, giving all your goblins plus one one. It's a two three for three. Not legendary this one as well, so it makes it good. That is what's nice about the two Anthem cards. They're not legendary, so you can get multiples of these on the battlefield. Uh, also has ability of pay one uh, red deals damage equal to the number of goblins that enter the, under your control turn to any target. So it could be a little wink on if you're chucking down some extra gobos. If maybe you've got some of the one manners, you can just put down two or three in one turn i've never actually used that ability though so if you have props to you we've got relic robber haste uh, makes a zero one colors goblin construct on the opponent's turn and it can't block so it just basically just keeps pinging your opponent so very good important card to the deck uh, they're going to have to remove that creature themselves so it's actually quite funny new to the deck fable of the mirror breaker creating a 2-2 shaman that can attack make treasure make everything look really got a bit of a card ability and then it turns into like the kiki jiki effect for those of you who played modern or anything like that will know this is a reflection of kiki jiki pay one create token that's a copy of another target non-legendary and remember your anthems are non-legendary so do that to maybe get the extra pump now it's different to kiki jiki it doesn't have haste uh, so you're gonna have to wait a turn to get this but you know sacrifice it at the beginning of the next instant that's fine we don't mind that we're just using it for the effect it has hobgoblin captain one of the best cards in the deck it's a common three one for two mana Tap a creature total power six or great uh, against first strike it's really cool pack taglets and um battle cry goblin pumping up in combat you can do this give another one haste you can get in for the further attacking as well and then you can create another goblin and if you've got your anthems on there it's not just going to be a one one uh, goblins is a really cool fun deck i've got to say it has lots of little one drops as well fireblade charger goblin javelinier as well and then raging goblin is another arena card so you won't have to craft that one either forgetting about huggy bear you can't forget about huggy bear the three three with haste that's coming down um, all in all, this is a really good deck. It has lots of aggressive creatures. It has removal, like shock, like demon bolt, instant speed removal. And then, like I said about if you're putting lots of creatures in, Goblin Gathering create a number of 1-1 one, one red Goblin creatures. Each of plus two number of cards of this in the graveyard is another good way that if you've got this, you can tap this, maybe do the damage, like I said. Um, but yeah, this has a few arena cards in, so it's slightly less of a of a problem to craft but it's still only 13 rares two of them are lands 
Den of the Buggy Bear, like it, 3-2, and then makes another 1-1. One, one. So you're splashing loads of creatures into this, and you're just swarming the board with goblins, and then basically just attacking for the win. So the last deck that we're looking at is uh, one of the newest decks because of Neon Dynasty. It only has 11 rares, um, and this is Dimir Ninjas. I uh, love Kato Shizuki, and you get a chance to play it in this deck. Uh, just runs the two of them. Uh, makes creatures that can't be blocked then draw you know at the beginning of your end step as well I like this because it ends up having it phases out so they can't even kill it on their first turn draw a card they discard a card unless you attack this turn but you're trying to attack in you're doing all the ninjutsu fun stuff getting this tricksy blue deck going minus two create a one one blue ninja this creature can't be blocked so you can see the synergy of making a creature that can't be blocked then drawing a card and then you don't have to discard with the plus one ability other rares in the deck, Biting Palm Ninja, 3-3 three, three for 3, ends battle with Menace Counter on it. When it deals combat damage to a player, you may remove a Menace Counter from it. When you do that, player reveals and you choose a non-land card from it and exile it. So this is a really cool effect. You want to be attacking and you want your creatures not to be a block. That is the whole thing about Ninjutsu, returning an unblocked attacker you control to hand and then putting this Ninjutsu card onto there and it gets through, then you get the abilities. It's what this deck is all about. It runs Mind Link Mech as a one as well, four or three flyer which crew for the first time into his turn so it ends the turn becomes a copy of target non-legend creature that crewed it this turn except it's a four three and has flying as well so yeah pretty pretty cool cards and the other four rares over here thousand face shadow ninjutsu just put this in my um your rico deck thousand face shadow one it's got ninjutsu four uh, so you can play it as your 1-1, one, one, as a 1-1 one, one fly, maybe get over, then ninjutsu another creature in. Or you can, when you have it late game, it's still good. So enters a bad fall from your hand. If it's attacking creature, creature token is a copy of another target creature. That token enters the battle tapped and attacking. So this is, if you like decks that are more controlling, more tricksy, this is probably the deck for you. Has the ninja tribal effect, so, you know, sort of speaks out to tribal fans as well. It has um, what blue does, fade and hope, returning target creatures. It has counter spells. It has negate in there as well. Um, you got you know various different types of ninjutsu type of creatures uh we've got dakushi silencer when this deals comic damage play you may discard a creature card where you do destroy target creature or planeswalker which is a very very strong effect if you've got a dead creature and this is you know putting this down dealing damage when you're getting through with ninjutsu and then destroying a planeswalker just seems absolutely brilliant prosperous thief when one or more ninja or rogue creatures you control deal combat damage create a treasure token so helps you ramp out a little bit as well so keeping up that extra mana that you might need for the counter spell of negate or bouncing saying with fade and hope um at the one drop the disruptor ends battle tap target permanent which is very helpful when you want to get through with creatures so you can put in ninjutsu putting this in don't all you know don't always put this in turn one save onto this till you've got your ninjutsu in hand build up your hand put this in tap stuff down so you have the free ability to attack him moon snare specialist in the deck ends the battle return up to one target creatures to its hand with the ninjutsu effect so even if they don't block you could then return saying slowing down your opponent which is what blue decks really really like to do and one of the last creatures that we're going to look at here is a silver fern master two mana ninjutsu for two and the abilities cost less to activate when it's in there and this is your little bump gives all your ninjas and rogues plus one one very important card to the deck and um one that you want to either bounce back to protect it because remember bouncing back is not a bad thing bouncing your own creatures in this because you're trying to just get it through so putting something back to potentially ninjutsu again opponents are always gonna have to block or maybe take the chance that you're gonna have an effect when you get through with one of your creatures uh, one of the most expensive in paper uncommons from the set secluded courtyard is in there because it's choosing the creature type and obviously we're ninjas so we're going to be doing that and then the land base very simple 16 islands three swamps it is really is like the basic land base for this you know there's uh, there's a few black cards but it is majority of blue so that's probably why that but you've got a secluded courtyard there that will be able to tap for that manner as well but this is a very fun deck to play and is performing well on the ladder and for 11 rares you know this is probably a really really cool deck to craft
So there was five budget meta decks with, you know, with thinking about your budget in mind, thinking about spending less rares, but still getting consistent decks that are getting wins in the meta. And you can take a look, there's lots of different styles in these decks. There's a lot of aggro. There's, you know, different with the Dimming Ninjas as well. You've got Enchantment themed decks. So you can really choose which one suits you best. Or maybe you just look up which rares you have most of for each deck and then just get to learn that deck as well is another way round to do it as well. Uh, if you found this uh, video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Share it with your friends. It really does help. I just want to give a big shout out to my Patreons. And if you like all the work I do, check out the link in the description and become a Total MTG Patreon. I've just added some new rewards there. So lots of fun stuff on there as well. Anyway, you lot take care and I'll see you on the next video.